going to introduce everybody. Um, the first person I'm introduced, since we can see his smiling face, is Joel Kahn. He's a serial entrepreneur, and I think that means he likes cereal. Um, he's a New York Times best-selling author. Um, not many people get to say that. He's a speaker, consultant, and and he wears a size 10 shoe in case you're interested. Uh, the next person we have, um, the fa <laughs> true story, the faceless guy Brian Carter. Um, he he prefers to go by Brian Carter. He's he's a digital marketing consultant with the Carter Group, keynote speaker, author of the Like Economy, Facebook marketing, LinkedIn for business, and previously a stand-up uh, comedian. Um, in fact, I think he still is, uh, or as, as far as I understand, he still is a stand-up comedian, but maybe he'll, he'll confirm that. He's, he's actually doing one-liners in yeah, the chat know. room right now. By the way, the reason my <laughs> picture's not up is because I'm, I'm so incredibly good-looking that it would just blow everybody away. And so just to make it fair, I'm just going to be here in text and audio only. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> And then we've got Tim Washer, the smiling guy right there in my lower right. I feel like we're the Brady Bunch. Um, <laughs> here's a story of Tim Washer. And um, he is a comedy writer, host, Webby honoree. He's been on Saturday Night Live, Conan O'Brien, The Onion, improv, storyteller, keynote speaker, and MC. I believe he also works for Cisco. <laughs> Welcome, Tim. How are you doing? Hey, I'm well. Thank you. Good. Good to, good to have you and great to see or hear you, all three of you guys. Um, let's get started. Since we have, um, have us all uh, mostly here, let me, let me talk. Uh, let's talk a little bit and take, take some turns here. So, Joel, why don't you go first? What is funny? <laughs> Tim Washer is funny. <laughs> Sweet. That Say no more. Brian Carter is funny looking, but you can't see him right now. I'm hilarious and invisible. Sorry. Like, for something to be funny, there has to be a grain of truth to it, right? Comedy is, is uh, the formation of taking something that we believe we know, we perceive we know, we've experienced, and putting a spin on it that has enough uh, truth basis in it that the spin is what makes us go, <laughs> yeah, okay. Tim, that's, what's that's your version? Funny is. Of what is funny? Well, what I guess funny? one way to say is, uh, you can define it as something that makes you laugh. And then if you want to get into uh, uh, vector physics, which I assume is where you're going next, I, I once heard a, uh, I, I saw a demonstration on where, Looking at a laugh is basically you, you set up a path of logic coming this way, and then a punchline slams this down and shuts off this logic. And the energy going this direction has nowhere to go but releases in laughter. So that's, um, I don't know if I agree with that, but that's some physics for you. I like it. Physics and humor. Uh, Brian, we, can, we, we want to hear what you have to think about funny. What do you think is funny? Um, you know, it's funny, it depends on the person, um, but, you know, some people think things are funny, other people don't agree, right? So it depends on your audience. Um, and then when you're trying to be funny, you try to find things that everybody can relate to, that everybody has some tension or to, uh, something about that we can release. Um, and, yeah, and then when you take it to business, you got to be appropriate. <laughs> well, Lynn Johnson really? thinks that you're Why? funny. <laughs> Nice. Um, so this is this is good. So all right, now we've kicked it off a little bit. Let's let's do a round. Let's do a round robin. Um, and I want each of you guys to say um, one random word that rings true for you with whatever you're looking at in your room. Are you ready? We're going to do a little little improv. So I'm going to go first. Remote. Joel. <coughs> Mess. Uh, onomatopoeia. <laughs> uh, Academia. Thousands of small... Oh, I'm supposed to use one word. Damn it. Rebel. Rebel. Um, let's see. 
Parker. <laughs> That's what Brian know? looks like. <laughs> why do you have I'm moving that? it down here. Wait, why why isn't this working? <laughs> All right, let's bring it back to serious again. What is the best way to tell a joke online? What gets the joke across in the best way possible online? Tim, why don't you take that one? Yeah, I like I like video because in video you can you can control unless there's a technical glitch or latency, you can control the delivery and how the reveal comes across. All of that with when you're writing text like if you're writing a caption for Instagram or something like that uh, sometimes the picture may be the setup of the joke or the punchline of the joke so when the audience when the person the reader takes in that information you, it, it does matter whether the picture comes in first to the mind versus the text and how that's processed you, you really can't control you lose a lot of control online when uh, text is involved Yeah, I, both, both Tim, both Tim and, and uh, Brian Carter are comedy professionals. Uh, you know, I don't think either you or I, uh, Brian Kramer, you know, we're, we're we're not experienced in the art of writing the joke. We just like to have fun and be playful, and so uh, I write whatever comes, you know, from here at the moment, and whatever comes out, and sometimes. Uh, it it just ends up being funny, and if nobody else thinks it is, then, then at least I'm laughing with or at myself, and I'm always laughing at you. Ah. <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Being I'm clueless laughing you're at, at me. It's working. Being clueless while talking for three minutes is that's what humor online is. <laughs> Wait, okay, I'm sorry. I was making fun of Joel. Um, Humor online, it depends, right, on the medium. I think it's easier to be funny on Twitter because people are not that funny on Twitter. You can do a one-liner. As soon as you, <laughs> thanks, Joel. As soon as you go to video, it gets harder because people expect it to be as funny as a movie or TV, and you don't have the fake laughs, which they still use because it works. Um, but, yeah, and obviously photos can be funny. Um, I think there are different grades of humor, though, like because... Something may not be laugh out loud funny, but you'll smile at it, and it's still kind of funny. Um, yeah. You know, um, Brian, I don't know if you can, if you know this, but um, Joel is holding up your picture every time you talk. Yeah, so, so um, okay, good. Well, you just crumbled it up, so I guess he will leave. Yeah. You are well represented. Um, <laughs> So brands try to use humor in marketing all the time, but what's the wrong way to use humor? Um, why don't, Brian, why don't you start? Um, you know, that's different for every brand. Um, like George Takei, if you call him a brand, maybe he's a personal brand, he, he can, he, he's got a pretty, I don't know if he has a line, to be honest. Um, everyday household brands, they have to look at, uh, do we want to be PG or do we want to be a G-rated type of brand? Um, there's sometimes when I do presentations on this, I'll show a picture of a some e-card where the this kid is talking to the doctor, and the doctor says, "You need to stop eating vegetables. I can't find anything wrong with you." Which is a, a some e-card that was posted by the American Heart Association, and it's not super duper funny, but it's not inappropriate, right? So um, you got to be really, really careful. And I feel like until you've gone out and done stand up. It's hard to know where the line is. Um, even when you've done stand-up, then you can go into a, a corporate environment and say things that you think are still fine. We are and then losing you some get feedback there. from the meeting planner that no, that one shouldn't shouldn't do that one. Um, so you know, I think it takes time, and you got to get feedback. And and the, you know, one of the crazy things about humor is you're going to make some mistakes. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> oh man. Okay, I'm done. Sam, why don't you take that one? Take the next one. Uh, what was the question? <laughs> when, do not, when do you not use humor? What was it? What's the wrong, what's the so wrong way thinking, to use humor? Yeah, that... Um, Brands try to use humor in marketing all the time. What's, what's, a, what's the wrong way to use it? Well, I guess I'd... 
answer it this. I think there's a right way to use humor. I think the wrong way is um, it has to be connected to the idea. It, meaning if, if there's a marketing, there needs to be, there should be some loose, very loose connection to the rest of the story or the content. The wrong way to use humor, I think, is to, um, to, to try to force it or to put too much burden of like, say, corporate messaging. I think that's one of the problems. That, that's one of the reasons comedy doesn't work too well in the corporate world is because I think it's just not done well. Either you don't, either you don't have the right people who know how to write it uh, or edit it. Like a lot, I, I work on so many projects for a corporate video, people want to use humor in there and they say, oh, we got to, we can just use our regular video crew and the video editor. You can't. You have to have somebody who understands comic timing. So I think there's there's one example of like if that's the wrong way to use humor to say, all right, we're going to use our regular process, but we want it to be funny because it's not going to happen. Uh, the other challenge is like uh, the approval process. People think you can approve uh, uh, humor the same way you can improve like a marketing PowerPoint that's going through committee. You, that won't work. You, you need to have people who understand the joke and understand how comedy works before you start tweaking or taking words out, that kind of thing. Great, great. Joel, how about you? So, you know, there's a big difference between funny and, and edgy, right? And sometimes corporations go beyond to to be edgy thinking that's funny it reminds me of the comedians that make their living just off cursing i mean anybody can curse and just about anybody can make the f-bomb funny yes timing accounts for something but if if the most laughs you're getting are coming from profanity then it tells me you really don't have much funny to say you might go for the low-hanging fruit but you know corporations also have to take risks you know, if you're going to be, comedy is not pretty, right? I mean, all you got to do, is, this is why we can't see Brian Carter. It's not pretty. You don't, <laughs> you don't want to see this. And, and but it, with any business and any <laughs> entrepreneurship, any corporation, if you want to get attention, you have to be willing to step out there and take a risk. So like right now, who's doing it really funny and just beautiful timing of using video to, to hawk his products is Weird Al. Right, eight videos, eight days, new release, tearing it up. Probably more popular now than he's ever been before, and it's funny stuff. You, uh, you, may, you have everyone around the table here laughing at you, so that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, um, give me an example of something that each of you has done. You you didn't realize it was funny, and it it ended up becoming something that that um, was humorous. That we didn't realize was funny at first. Yeah, you know what 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 kind of ad hoc funny? What is it that um, what improv situation comes to mind, um, or a, a time when you um, did something and everyone just it took off. But but unintentionally, either uh, I mean, usually. Let's let's go with that. Talk to me about unintentional versus improv. Well, I'll I'll just you know when I speak and I'm on stage, I, I'm the same you know I'm the same guy no matter where I am. What you see is what you get, and uh, I don't like to be scripted in any situation, probably because I'm lazy. And, uh, and I like unpredictable stuff, so I'll put my foot in my mouth frequently. You know, I'll say something, and, and the audience might take it as some sort of innuendo. And rather than get embarrassed and just, uh, you know, brush it under the, the table, I'll recognize it. And I'll just be completely self-deprecating, like, oh, my gosh, I re that just happened, right? And now everybody knows I'm in on the joke. I am the joke in that moment. And I embrace that moment. Uh, you know, if, if people are having a good time, I don't even mind if it's at my expense occasionally, every now and then, once in a great while. Every day. Never. <laughs> yeah, the only one Jim, I can especially think Especially in the corporate life, you work at Cisco. What's your, what's your thought on that? How far is too unintentional, uh, ad hoc, improv? It, well, there's, there's a rule in, in long-form improv 
when when you uh, there's one of the rules in long form improv, and that long form improv there's a there's a format called the Herald, where you get you're in a troupe of like seven or eight people, and you uh, go up on stage with absolutely nothing, no ideas, no nothing, and then you take one suggestion from the audience, and then you create this 30 minute show, and it's brilliant. And one of the rule there's a couple of rules that you need to follow, like agreement, yes and that kind of thing. But one of them is there are no mistakes, only gifts. And that's, that's you got to get yourself to a place where you truly believe that you cannot do anything incorrectly. That whatever happens, even if you say the wrong name, if you forget the character's name that, that's already been introduced, and you say it wrong, well, you just go with it. And that really, you can't do improv without truly believing that's okay. And so in the corporate world, you, if, to, we're all kind of pushed to take risk now. But you do have, you have an environment that doesn't necessarily support that. There's sometimes, there's some things in the culture that, uh, that, are, that are counter to true risk taking. So uh, in the corporate world, it's, it's I mean, if you, if you care about your career, then you're going to uh, be a little bit more careful and avoid risk taking. So the line is, I think, you're just much more constrained. Uh, if you get to a point where it's like, look, I want to create good work and I really don't care if I get promoted, it's more important to do good work, then, then you don't worry too much about the line. You just have to have it, like Brian was talking earlier, you have to have a sensibility of, of what's appropriate. And there are some things, obviously, you wouldn't want to do in corporate, obviously. But I don't, I don't think, I, I wouldn't even do those, I don't do those in the comedy club either. I don't think, you know, I, profanity was mentioned earlier. I rarely ever have I used profanity in a, you know, and it's like hell. I think hell's the worst thing I've said. Uh, just because it seems like you can't be creative enough to come up with another way to explain what you're talking about. Um, as far as improv in, in the corporate world, I, I do remember when it was unintentional, just dealing with PowerPoint presentations when you're up on a technical glitch. I've, I've had those happen to me, and the usual thing we do is we get flustered, and it's just in, and there's a quick spiral of decline. But if you just kind of say, all right, if you make, if you, if you can just relax and make a joke about it, or just keep going and not let it get flustered, it'll go, it'll go so much better. I had one disaster a few years back, and we ended up, we ended up cutting it together and making a little clip. I think we call it when, when PowerPoint attacks and put it up on YouTube, and it's gotten some good views. But it, it just, you just gotta kind of say, all right, look, I'm gonna take what comes to me, and it's gonna work out okay. Hey, Brian, how about yourself? Um, well, as far as like the unintentional thing, um, thank you. oh my God, Joel, that's really creepy. I'm trying to find my picture <laughs> of you, Brian. That would, that would be inappropriate, I think. I don't know. Maybe right there is over the line a little bit. <laughs> God, Joel. <laughs> I'm leaving. Um, when, when I was teaching, I used to be an acupuncturist, and when I taught medical terminology, and there was a... Uh, a time when I was explaining something about like DNA and something it was something having to do with gender and I don't know whatever but I just made this offhanded comment about DNA and I, I said you know it comes from it's part of our sex it's it's just embedded in us and they're like and somebody thought that was a euphemism you know but generally this all this un, unintentional stuff it doesn't really come to mind for me um, and I don't know. I just find I find I think that that you're in a different part of your brain when you're doing improv, um, and it's it's harder to pull that stuff up because memory is state dependent. Um, what was the question? I'm just making fun of Joel now. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best I can do. There he I is. Got my there he is. Let's all go, go put him up. Oh my God! That's really creepy. Hi, I am Joel Lips. <laughs> I there's so many jokes there that we can't touch right now, but yes, that's that's I a good one. What, never mind. No, yeah, right. So um, let's let's um, let's. There's a couple questions that came up from people that are watching. Um, the one that I like uh, that just passed through here from Courtney was, "Do you guys have a go-to joke?" Let's start with Tim. I'm. I'm. I, I don't. You know what? I don't have a go-to joke, but I have a go-to recovery joke. 
And okay. particularly like if I'm, if I'm writing something for an executive uh, who may not be that comfortable with delivery, first of all, I try to write something that's independent. It'll work independent of anybody's delivery. But then secondly, I always try to give them a recovery joke. And this, this won't work in corporate, but like I did something at a church one time and the joke didn't work. And I said, that works a lot better with a two drink minimum or that joke's funnier with a two drink or something like that. And it's just, it, it's something that I always, it's, it's just, you can always go to it and you're going to have a laugh. It's good to have that kind of thing, I think. Yeah. How about you, Joel? Uh, no, I am the go-to joke, you know. <laughs> I, I think to like recover is basically just acknowledging that that wasn't funny. So I, I think, okay, so there's my go-to. Um, if I say something on stage or in a podcast, I think it's funny. It doesn't get a response. I'll stop and I'll go, well, I thought it was funny. And that'll get a laugh. Like that. It's not really a joke. It's more, it's just a recognition <laughs> of, hey, you're supposed to be laughing right here. You're not down with it. And there's something wrong with me because it really wasn't funny. Brian, do you have a go-to joke? Um, I've got a couple. Like when I start, I'll say, hey, I, uh, I'm from Dayton, Ohio, which is famous for people leaving as soon as possible. Um, and that's another one. Is, uh, my, I, I don't think it's cool to teach dogs to shake hands because they have no idea what they're agreeing to. Like my dog's car payment is ridiculous. Um, but then my, the one I can't use in corporate, which is um, because it uses the word shit like eight times. Um, I'll do it for you if you want. It's, it, it takes a minute. Do you want to hear it? Yes. All right. Man, we're different at different ages, right? Like in your 20s, you're like, let's do some shit. In your 30s, you're like, let's buy some shit. In your 40s, you're like, well, we sure did some shit. In your 50s, if you're a woman, you're like, I'm hot as shit. If you're a man, you're like, what happened to my shit? That goes on with hand signals. Like, okay, that's really hard to do on a, with a video. When, you, in, when you're in your 60s, you're like, why can't I shit? When you're in your 70s, you're like, I can't remember shit. When you're in your 80s, you're like, I'm old as shit. I don't know what happens in your 90s, but if you make it to your 100s, you're like, shit, I'm on the Today Show. I think it's got a few like visual things you got to see. the punchline. Oh. Well, that's the best part. You, you, you got to say the punchline. What part did you hear? The last line. What's the last thing? The fun part. <laughs> okay. <laughs> When you're in your 80s, you're like, I'm old as shit. When you, I don't know what happens in your 90s, but when you make it to your 100s, you're like, shit, I'm on the Today Show. I think I just learned, like, never funny. to... <laughs> no, no, I just, so I just let's... learned that my funny joke, my funniest joke in the world is not funny on the internet. That's ridiculous. Hey, Brian, could you say that joke again? No, I'm not going to say it again. Um, I'm kidding, of course. <laughs> So here, this is what's funny. Check out this shirt that I got. This is funny. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. I think that's funny. <laughs> He's like, oh, come my on. Shirt. Can't you come up with it? <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. So let's um let's talk a, a little a little bit about some brands that you guys feel are doing really really well in humor right now. Um, and, and give me an example, at least one. What what do you feel is humorous right now? Who's doing it well, especially on social, but doesn't have to be. It can be anywhere in advertising or marketing. I'm gonna I'm gonna pass because I see stuff. I think it's funny, and then I forget it, and I move on with something more important in my life. So I don't even no example comes to mind right now. I think Tim Washer is funny. Uh, uh, thank you. Sir, uh, let me, I, I do the same thing that Joel does. Let me look at a list of one. The first one that comes to mind, Brian, is the uh, this is it's not right now. This was about a year ago. This um, Sears, there was a Sears commercial called The Beach, where they they do they mimic they set you up to believe there are these two lovers running toward each other, and uh, they cut back and forth. I mean, the timing's perfect. They create this kind of tension. And then the dude runs smack into a refrigerator that's sitting there just in the middle of the beach. In the middle. And it's just genius. It's so good. It's so good. There's uh, Oreo had a pretty funny one with uh, shut the front door. 
know what's interesting about that? You can find these different links, links, different link. I'm sorry. Some of them are 30 seconds, some of them are 15, some of them are 20. <laughs> How about that? You know what I'm saying? And the, it's amazing. The 15 second one is so much more funny. Uh, anyway, I, I, I like that one. And anyway, I'll, I'll try to think of a couple of more. Let me look up a few more that I have on a list that I think are good. Brian, anything that comes to mind? I'm drawing a blank because I mean, I really, I usually, usually feel like commercials don't pull it off um, very well. I mean, maybe some of the ones Will Ferrell did for what was it, some truck brand or whatever, yeah, with, awesome. with the last Anchorman movie. So good. Um, I I did laugh at one where somebody ran into a refrigerator. I'm not sure if it was the same one that you're talking about, Tim. But evidently, that's funny. Well, that's just slapstick, right? It always works. Um, but there's a lot of them where you're just like, uh huh. I can see what you're trying to do. <laughs> you know, it's interesting because you guys all share pretty much the same um, the same opinion, I think. Um, which is, this is called the social face-off. So we're gonna have to get some arguing going. But um, you guys are all saying um, that humor is one of those things that. Uh, passes you up and you found it funny in the moment but it's hard to um, it's hard to remember uh, a situation later on is well, that part of that is just being two... yeah go ahead two two things one <laughs> well one I went to college for four years so I killed a lot of brain cells and two I'm 50 I don't re you know if it's important I remember it, but I'm actually a horrible, horrible joke teller. I, I my repertoire, like Brian Carter, could could go on for hours just shooting out one-liners. Tim probably could too. I my the only joke I remember is how many psychologists does it take to change a light bulb? Uh, one, because but the light bulb has to want to change. I if I try to pull other jokes, they're not there. If I'm funny, it's just in the moment and it's spontaneous. Do you agree with that, Tim? Yeah, I do. I, I don't like telling. First of all, I, I don't I don't tell jokes like that 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 anybody could tell. It's just that's completely uninteresting to me. So, and I when I started off doing stand up in New York, I was I I was structuring a joke. Here's a setup. Here's the payoff. Uh, but it and it was irony typically was involved in that kind of thing. But I think when you get a little bit more mature as a comedian, and that's, that's the only way I'm maturing, by the way, is that you <laughs> learn it's just stating fact. You're, you're stating things that are truthful, and you're stating things that typically they're aggravating because a lot of comedy comes from pain, and you're just being honest and vulnerable up on stage. And once you learn to do that and just share those things and be comfortable enough with yourself. I mean, look, I, I hate myself as much as the next guy, and but... I'm comfortable enough with it. There's some things that I don't mind sharing that like, look, here, here are my struggles. Uh, that, that works for me more than a joke. But like Joel's saying, sometimes you'll do a presentation and something will happen. There'll be something that's improvised and you'll say, okay, uh, hey, wait a minute. Let me keep that. Let me hang on to that and use that next time. So, uh, and then you end up building a pretty solid set over time from some of these improvised moments. Brian, um you were you had some thoughts here. I know in the chat you've been chatting it up. Um, you said uh, a couple of things here. Do you want to? Do you have a, a a thought on this as well? Um. Yeah, I think I missed your question though. What was the question? You know the 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 questions around um, the um, uh, not remembering. Um, you know, it's really you know the improv. <laughs> You know, kind of what you just. <laughs> I don't remember the question. No, um, you know, not remembering the humor. It's really hard. Uh, you know, you guys are all stating the same thing, where you know it's in the moment. It's something that makes you funny. But uh, you know, a year from now, what do we remember? I'll, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, it's rare that. So I, I've been writing jokes since like 2007, and there, there people will sometimes say I love this or that joke, but it's it's rare. Um, and, I mean, and I don't. It might just be because I'm not funny, but I don't, I don't think so. Um, 
But yeah, I feel like when I write jokes, I have to almost, sometimes they come out naturally, other times I have to force myself into this other way of thinking. Um, either because to get funny stuff, you have to say something that's not normal thinking or something. And then again, I think memory state dependent. So, you know, when, when I say that stuff later, I have to memorize it. I have to do the joke like 10 times before I can do it solidly. Um, so yeah, I think, yeah, there's definitely an issue with that, but usually I use humor either to get people more comfortable with a situation or to relieve tension or whatever. Because like, you know, an hour of boring lecture is, it's hard to get that through people's brains. I mean, they're going to learn more when they're laughing. So that's, that's why I use it. Well, and, and uh, I love the way that Carter does autographed photos. Like when you go to his stand-up routine, like I went to see him one time and, and I walked away with this. You know, which I just, I, it's, I just tell the truth. I just near and dear to my heart, I so I appreciate truth, it. Joel. I'm just a truth teller. Hey, I, I went to uh, the, the, the point you just said about taking care of an audience, Brian. I was, uh, Carter, I, about two months ago, I was going, I had to go to like this all day training. Uh, and you're in, it was a parenting class, parenting class. And, um, I just, it was a first, it was a first warm day we had without snow, like in March, you know, and I was just like, ah, oh, gosh, I don't want to be locked up in the school all day and was really dragging it. And I, I like got there about 10 minutes late. I was the last person to check in and I was getting my name tag. Nobody was in the lobby. And then I hear this laughter and just like that, I'm just, I'm racing to get in there. And it was just amazing to me, even though I'm in this business how hearing that there was laughter in where I was going just completely changed my attitude. Because if, if someone can make the audience laugh like that, it shows, it proves that, okay, this, this woman had, she understands the audience enough to connect with them. You know, she has empathy for them. I mean, it just says so many, not, and then of course the whole superficial point of you're going to laugh and have fun and be entertained. But it, to me, it shows immediately, even without being in the room, I knew, okay, this speaker's going to take care of me. She's going to be a good steward of my time. And it's like, man, why, why are we not doing more of this in the corporate world? Why do we not spend more time when we all know how powerful it can be? I mean, it's, it, people say it's hard, but not if you have the right, you got to get the right skills, get people who can write the jokes. And anyway, I, I think it's really powerful. It can, it's just tremendous. Well, it's, I, can I say one thing? I love the, just it's like, rare that you get. I love the analytical approach that Tim takes to, to comedy, right? The, those of us that are just schlubs and, you know, off the top of our heads just being silly are one thing, but for, you know, somebody like Tim and, and Carter, it, comedy is an art form. And, uh, and I just, I appreciate that. I think you're an art form, too. <laughs> I'm a form of something. By the way, the cat may make an appearance. She just jumped over here. So, you know, uh, one of the things that um, let's see, Brian said, "I married a cat lady, and it was the best decision my mom ever made for me." Nice. So, um, <laughs> and Queen said, "Awkward." This is nice because we can enjoy our awkward moments in a webinar because it's all about being funny. How, so let's transition into that. Um, have you used humor to respond to an awkward moment? Is it useful or do you just reply as like US Air would never reply to an awkward moment with, a, with humor? It's a bad time to be humorous, right? When's the right time to be humorous in an awkward moment? When you have offended people egregiously, or you have made a joke about uh, a horrific current event, like this is really not the time to be joking about Malaysian air. I know that it's low-hanging fruit for people to go ahead and make jokes, but it's really not the time. You know, joking about 9-11 is still not funny as far as, I'm, uh, as far as I'm concerned. It's in poor taste. And so when you've done something that has outright offended your customer base, that is not the time to be funny. You just say, Hey, we screwed up. We are sorry. Period. End. So, Joel, um, just one question before we move to uh, 
to Brian and Tim on that. Uh, Dave, and I know he was joking about this, but um, but it was a long time ago, so I'm just uh, throwing it out there because Dave has a good question. Is Hitler okay yet? And, uh, you know, it's it, it was a long, long time ago. Is it still okay? Or is it, uh, you know, is it okay yet? I mean, who you're talking to. If you if you're if you're speaking to a bunch of you know World War II veterans or families of or people who have lost people you know in the war, you know maybe not. I wouldn't go to the Holocaust Museum and start making Hitler jokes. Uh, you know it's it's if it's Saturday Night Live, then it's you know it's a different type of thing. If it's a Mel Brooks movie, it's a, it's a different type of audience. Okay. Brian, do you have a thought on this? Yeah. Um... It's really hard to generalize on this because, kind of like Tim has said, it depends on what you have on board. I mean, I think um, it's more how you do it. If you figure out a way that you think will work, then you can do it. But it's but how you're not going to know if you if you can make light of it in a way that's going to be acceptable unless you have enough talent there to figure that out. You know, um, this isn't a, a business example, but like sometimes. I do a lot of jokes where uh, I'm self-deprecating, and I deprecate all over myself, right? And uh, mm -hmm. um, if, if in the South, where I am now, I don't know if this is a culture change or if it's because I moved to the South, but if I do too much self-deprecation, inevitably some girl in the audience starts going, aww, which is like totally the wrong response. Like I'm looking for... So I created a joke to deal with that. I said, you know what, I can, I have a superpower. I can send thoughts into other people's brains, but only sad thoughts. That's right, I'm telepathetic. That means I'm awesome, right? So I created that in order to deal with a situation that kept coming up in my stand-up. Um, so I think there are ways to write jokes, but, um, but yeah, it's, and it's not, I, I think probably the only people doing jokes about Hitler are, insane people, right? I mean, certain topics, when people are attracted to them, is just weird, you know? How about you, Tim? Well, I, I don't know if it's, I wouldn't say it's weird. I think, um, I do think, look, in, in like late night comedy, a lot of times that's actually, there are jokes about the fact that there are so many Hitler jokes. People, I mean, it's, that's almost a go-to joke, and people play off that because it's done so much. And a lot of sometimes humor can be used. To, uh, you know, if, if you make if you make something the butt of your joke, you're taking the sting out of it. And, it, and sometimes there can be, uh, you know, there there can be some value in healing. I'm not saying that's what happens when you hear a Hitler joke. I'm just saying that there can be healing with jokes. If if you allow people to laugh at some of the angst and some of the hurt and the pain. It, it can be a very healthy, productive thing. Again, let me be clear. I'm not talking about the specific example, and I wouldn't use. I never use. Uh, I never use a Hitler joke in the corporate world, of course. But um, I, you know, I, I've seen some of them done. Letterman, Letterman does that quite a bit. That's kind of a go-to joke for him too, or it has been in the past, I should say. I, I do think now. I think in the last couple of years, though, people have sometimes we've kind of gotten more sensitive. And I think people have shied away from those type of jokes for that reason. You know, Tim makes a really good point about how healing humor can be. And there is, uh, I've discovered personally, a really um, thin line between our emotions. And I was going through some pretty heavy stuff a couple of years ago. And I don't remember what it was that, that set me off, but I was definitely, you know, kind of, stressed out about what was going on and my emotions were really strong but I didn't realize how strong they were until I read something funny I don't remember exactly where I was but I read something funny and the joke was so funny I laughed so hard that I cried and and then those tears turned into all of a sudden I was sobbing <laughs> it was it was a completely cathartic experience that the intense laughter unlocked these these intense uh, feelings of sadness and all of a sudden my crying was real crying and there's so there is uh, obviously healing power in humor and no I will not cry now neither on demand or on request yeah I think so that's kind of what I'm saying in the comments so I think in order to do certain jokes and certain topics you have to be a pure comedian you have people have to know that you are just purely 
like a joke person. And then they're like, oh, okay, we'll accept it from you, maybe. But um, yeah, I, I, there are certain topics that I think even to bring up make people weirded out in a corporate environment, and they'll they'll never laugh at. Let's let's talk about um, social media and what's happened to humor since social has come onto the scene. Because um, humor has become probably one of the, you know, it, in my in my feed it becomes you know every third uh, you know or or, or every fourth uh, status update whether you call it a meme, a joke, um, you know people being trying to be funny about certain things that might be healthy for them or maybe it's not. Um, what what have you guys seen in terms of changes in social and where do you think where do you think people can take it? Like in terms, in, in how can they enhance it? How can they make it better? Than what we have right now. I fart. The king of I fart. Okay. Download I fart and so move forward. That I learned a good lesson about two years ago because I've, I I tend I enjoy the cerebral a little bit more, or clever joke, and I don't like the lowbrow humor. I've always thought that. And maybe I just say that to be pretentious. But my wife went to London and she, her friends in London sent her home with a whoopee cushion. Okay. And our family has never laughed so hard, myself included. And I just, it really, it really shocked me at how much I was laughing over that silliness. And it, it, it opened my mind. It was like, oh my gosh, what am I, you know, talking about? I, it is, in thinking that I didn't like that type of humor. Now I don't. I don't do a great deal of fart jokes. Never have. Uh, but I, I got it. It was an eye opener to me that all kinds of. Um, I don't know. There's all kinds of different things that can make people laugh. I mean, in the corporate world, there are things that you need to. You, need, you know, you, you got to be a little bit more careful. There's a line as we talked about. But uh, anyway, I'm sorry again. What was the question? Joel got me distracted. <laughs> and, and Tim, relate relate That's that. Why I'm here. <laughs> relate that to social. How does that? How oh, how would so I want to I want to make sure that um and we can kind of end on this thought um because I want to make sure that everyone understands what you think is funny on social and how can we how can we enhance humor on social media? You, you get people who know what they're doing because because I've been in so many uh, meetings where with different companies where it's like okay we want to try humor and we tried it before you know and it didn't work. Well, let me see what uh, would you have? Would you come up with? They showed me and they said, "Well, did you bring in a writer?" No, Bob in accounts payable is pretty funny, and he wrote this stuff. So I'm like, "That's not trying, guys. You got it. You know, you have to give it a shot. You have to get people who know what they're doing and make sure the joke is pr protected from the approval process, and really give it a fair shot to go do it on social. And that's that's what or anywhere. And so that's what we need to see in social. We need to see more people getting a, a getting the experts in to do it. Mm. Interesting. Brian, how about yourself? Um, your, you your, know, your jokes are flying off the handle on this on the uh, chat screens. So I think, you know, you're getting uh, yeah. um, a lot of good stuff here, but how do you how do you feel on um, social? How can we enhance humor? Well, um, I think it totally depends on your audience, right? So you guys are freaking me out. Um, so, it, <laughs> my God, <laughs> I'm going to not look at the screen. Um, you have to get to know your audience, okay? So, Facebook is a great opportunity for that. And you can use graph search to see what kind of people they like. You can see what kind of TV shows they like. And I find people sometimes have a really wrong idea of who their audience is. And that could be from an ethnic perspective, from a beliefs perspective, from a values perspective. And so if you don't understand these people's values and beliefs um, and their culture and their lifestyle, you're going you're gonna to put something up that might be funny to you, but it's not going to be funny to them. So Facebook posts give you a great opportunity to be able to try that stuff out and see what kind of how many likes and shares you get from different stuff. That's a good way to do a little research because um, you can find other people's humor, share it, and you can find out what kind of things they like and don't like. And then if you're going to create something, that gives you a little bit of guidance uh, about what to create. 
Joel, you're up. What? How to be more humorous on social. And, well, just I think you know it's the same thing as how to use social media. It's all and about I fart is not a not, not a good answer. Trying to be funny, it's it's about just being who you are. And some people are funny, some people aren't. And if you're not funny, then don't try to be funny. Just be something else. Be whatever it is you are. Be brilliant. Be smart. We can't all be intelligent. So some of us just have to resort to being funny, right? To to detract from the fact that. We're not all that bright, and, and we're successful because we, you know, fell into it and, and defaulted. And so, you know, I, what I really like is uh, Carter just shared a link from his uh, blog about, uh, and I, maybe he can explain this, uh, the 21 funniest Facebook posts right now, and I guess it updates. It's, yeah, it's uh, always true. somehow. Is that uh, it comes from Infinigraph, so I put in a bunch of uh, really funny, some of the funniest and, and most interacted with uh, funny Facebook pages on there, like The Onion and George Takei and Comedy Central. And these are, over the last seven days, some of the most interacted with funny posts, and it's always up to date. Oh, that's cool. That's great, because if you're not funny but you think something's funny, people will think you're funny when you share something funny. So right. find something that has social proof that's funny, and share it, and all of a sudden, guess people are like, oh, "You're so funny." <laughs> all right, final question: Who do you look to as your mentor, whether they know it or not, uh, whether it's a brand or a person, as as someone who you idolize or uh, think is funny? Who who do you think is good, doing a good job in your eyes? And and saying Brian Kramer is not a good answer. <laughs> it's a poor answer. Oh, we're going to take I, I'm it. I'm going to go with Weird Al. I, I'm going to go with Weird Al. Weird Al inspired me so much that I may, I wrote a parody song and made a video. It went absolutely nowhere, but I thought it was funny, and it was to uh, Katy Perry's song Roar, and it's called Fart. And if you go on <laughs> YouTube, you can, you can pull it up. It's a Katy parody is what we called it, and I so wish that Weird Al would listen to it and give me feedback, but apparently he's too busy and weird for me. Yeah, pitch that for corporate. See if you can get a sponsor like Accenture. Well, I was thinking Bino there you you know, would there, be a no, better that's, sponsor. That's probably a little bit more. Yeah, you got a better shot there. I know. You're right. Avoid that, actually. We worked with them. Fallon. Dave Dave Cox just posted Fallon is winning late night and uh, yeah he's amazing I, I like I like Fallon a lot I think I think I like to look at the um, Colbert is uh, is I learn a lot by watching his show uh, of course John Stewart I like what uh, John Oliver's kind of created something new where he's going kind of deep and in, into stories and these long stories these long bits. So those are great. I, I can't say I've seen a brand that I really like, but I do go to, uh, on Adweek, their blog, Ad Freak. I go there a lot and find uh, great stuff. I think that's where I saw the Sears at. Ad Freak's a great resource. I mean, it's, they, it's not all comedy. It's just it's great ads and, and some bad ads, too. Let's see. Dave Cox agrees with you. There you go. Um, Dave Brian, knows, man. Brian. Dave well, I think I think George Takei is the best, um, but he's not really a serious brand. Um, I like Will Ferrell of anybody out there right now. I think he's the funniest. Um, of course, there's different types. I mean, in stand-up, I don't know. Obviously, it's still Louis C.K.'s hour. Um, and uh, Brian Regan, I always think is funny. I think Brian Regan is really good if you want to learn what kind of, what kind of things would be funny that would also be appropriate and corporate. Um, Brian Regan is really good for that. I love Brian. All right, let's end this on a, on a joke. Everyone tell me, uh, give me one. Uh, <laughs> everyone who's, who, uh, I, no horseplay here. Everybody, please uh, give me one joke. <laughs> one joke to, to take off, and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll close this out. Give me one joke for, from each of you. Um, Tim, what do you got? Uh, can I take a pass? Let me let me come up with something. I, yeah, I, yeah. Let me think about it. 
I kind of hit, hit you with that. Is this not good enough? A joke? I mean, like a like one of our favorite jokes or something? Or uh, one of your favorite jokes? You know that? No, I don't. No, uh, no. I'm working for you people here for crying out loud. It, yeah. I. I I'm, do I'm, you have I, one? I, I'm gonna give you three really quick, just because I don't know which ones will work on the internet. All right. So uh, number one, it's it's my parents' fault that I blame other people. Um, number two, if I had a Napoleon complex, I wouldn't admit it. I would say that Napoleon had a Brian Carter complex. Um, and the last one is, hey, you ever, you ever feed your cats and get wet cat food on your hands and you just wipe it off on the cat, right? It thinks you're petting it, thinks you're doing it a favor. And really you are, right? Because what do cats do all day long? They just sleep and lick themselves. So really, it's just a snack for later. Joel, what do you got? Well, speaking of cats, this is as funny as it gets right now. <laughs> because the internet is all about cats. <laughs> and if I had some if I had some bacon too, it would be, you know. Oh, there goes my ear. You know, I did um, I took an improv class last year and I discovered something about myself. Uh, I am not an actor. I have a really hard time putting myself into how somebody else is feeling. Maybe it's an empathy issue. I don't know. Um, so I, I discovered that I'm funniest when I'm just being who I am, when I'm being silly and ridiculous in the moment. So I don't have a joke. I'm, I am the joke. You know, Where, wherever I go, I have an opportunity to just be me and uh, be authentic and sometimes that means be serious and even in serious moments it means uh, bring humor to the situation because like uh, Tim said you know we humor can be um, healing and if we can't laugh at our extreme circumstances um, then we're missing out on a key part of being human so I have no joke for you I, look, I'll share. Look, two things. Tracy, Tracy Smith just posted uh, "Triumph the Insult Dog." That's genius. Let me list that. And then also, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll say, uh, Dave Cox, his um, quality assurance quote at the end of his uh, letter, or in his signature, anything less, <laughs> anything less than the best is a felony. And he quotes Vanilla Ice. I, and my 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 eleven year old my my that's my daughter my uh my six year old son is singing that now because I've been <laughs> so there you go I'm gonna use that for, I'm gonna use Dave Cox uh, sign off for my joke very nice very nice all right well we're gonna close this out I can't thank you guys enough everyone out there um, let's see Dave Cox Brian Tarter April Parcher Kathy uh, Clot's guest. Um, Tracy Smith, Kevin Fruin, um, Courtney Smith, um, let's see, Mike Carney, Adam Helway, did I say Dave Cox? I said Dave Cox. Uh, Lynn uh, Abate Johnson, Brian Fonzo. Um, thank you, everyone. I tried to read everyone's names that are immediately here. I really appreciate everyone taking part. And um, Joel, Tim, Brian, you guys rock. Appreciate it. Thanks for bearing with some of the technical issues here, and uh, we'll hope to see you all again soon. Sounds good. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Brian Kramer. Thanks, guys. Bye, all. It's so dark here. <laughs>